Okay, so welcome to today's tutorial. We will be talking about ankle fractures. I will first take you through the structure of the ankle and then the, the fractures whether A, B, and C. And then later we'll take you through some x-ray examples. So with ligaments, there are four ligaments that you have to think about. On the lateral view over here, you can see that there is a anterior talofibular ligament. And then you have a calcaneofibular ligament. And then you have the posterior talofibular ligament. On the medial view, you have what is called the medial collateral ligament or the deltoid ligament, which is, as you can see, made up of four separate ligaments. The posterior tibular tailor, the tibio calcaneal, the tibio navicular, and the anterior tibio tailor ligaments. And then the bones of the ankle joint are the tibia, the talus, and the fibula. A type A fracture is below the level of the talar dome. Over here, it's usually transverse, over here, and the tibula fibula syndesmosis is intact the deltoid ligament is intact and the medial malleolus is often fractured. And it's usually a stable fracture if the medial malleolus is intact. With the type D, type D is found on the distal extent at the level of the tailored dome or at um, the level of syndesmosis and may extend some distance proximally and it's usually a spiral fracture. The syndesmosis is usually intact, but you can have widening of the syndesmosis, um, which indicates syndesmotic injury. The medial malleolus may be fractured. The deltoid ligament may be torn, which is also shown by the widening of the space between the medial malleolus and the tailor dome. And just a note, this distance over here is, is usually equal to this distance over here. That is how you can see if there's some tailor shift or not. The Weber B fracture has variable stability depending on the status of the medial structures. That is the medial malleolus or the deltoid ligament and the syndesmosis and it may require ORF. And with a type C fracture, it's above the level of the ankle joint. It can go w right up to close to the um, fibula head, which is why when you're getting an X-ray, it is important to include the full length of the fibula. The medial malleolus um, is usually fractured as well as concurrent deltoid ligament injury. The Weber C fracture is unstable and usually requires ORF, which is open reduction and internal fixation. So with the Weber C, the syndesmosis is usually also disrupted making it a very unstable fracture because you have a disrupted syndesmosis, you have a medial malleolus fracture, with deltoid ligament injury, it's just chaos. Okay, so now we'll take you through some x-rays. Uh, so now just to put everything into perspective, we can look at the x-rays looking at the types of Weber's classification that we just had at Special Tutorial now on. Uh, with this ankle x-ray, first thing you need to do is to make sure that you use an approach. You can use inside out or outside in, but in this case, I'll use an outside in approach, wherein I'll look at the soft tissues, and then I'll check at the, uh, the bones and the syndesmosis and check if there's any kind of shift. 
So with the ankle fracture, what we do first is to look at the x-ray and first of all see uh, which bone is fractured and then afterwards we check if there's been any tailor shift and then thirdly what you look at where along the bone uh, usually the fibula the fracture is that will uh, guide you into what web of fracture is it so in this x-ray you can easily see that this uh, transverse fracture on the fibula uh, which is below the dome and as we had uh, uh, late, uh, previously if the fracture is below the tailor dome and the sinus muscle is still intact this fracture is classified to be Weber A fracture. On this x-ray, same approach from outside inwards, you can see that there's no signs of soft tissue damage that are visible on the x-ray. And then there's a bone fracture and there's been a slight tailor shift and the fracture that uh, the line of the fracture is uh, on the level of the syndesmosis. As we had before, if the fracture is on the level of syndesmosis and they can be medial fracture, here you can see an avulsed uh, medial malleolar uh, uh, bone and then we can see that the distance between the tibia and the talus and the uh, talus and the medial malleolus is, uh, is different so there's been a slight uh, change in our tailor shift. So this with the fracture being on the syndesmosis line we call it classified to be a Weber B fracture. And now, looking at this x-ray, uh, same approach. You can see that there's been fracture on both tibia and the fibula, and there's obvious syndesmosis uh, disruption and the tailor shift as well. So in this case, you can see with the tailor uh, syndesmosis disruption, we have a fibula fracture way above the syndesmosis, and then we, we have the medial malleolar fracture. This is usually, this is classified to be Weber C, fracture which is considered to be unstable and require ORIF which is open reduction in internal fixation to have a proper healing. That's it with the x-rays. Thank you very much.